is uh, Wabagiji Rapids. And this is where a 3.4 megawatt installed capacity uh, hydroelectric dam is going to uh, go if a developer has his way. And because of seasonal flows, that will only produce about 1.6 megawatts of power. And that will power about 1,600 families in this area. And this is a kilometer long set of rapids and falls. And two thirds of this will disappear under a head pond. So why would you destroy something like this to you know, feed 1,600 families power when we have a surplus of power right now and we're predicted to have a surplus of power right up until 2030. It's not about uh, generating power, it's about generating profits for large corporations. And it will be on the backs of taxpayers because these, uh, the FIT program offers a 50% peaking bonus and the, the power that's being generated is being sold to the United States and to Quebec at a loss. So that's our loss because we're the ones that are subsidizing that through our taxes. So it's going to be on the backs of our children and our grandchildren and our future generations. Green energy is supposed to save the environment. It's supposed to be in the best interests of the people of Ontario and it's to protect our environment. There are hundreds of dams in Ontario that we've had for many, many years that are not producing the kind of energy that they could. They need to have efficiencies made. A lot of them are even out of commission right now. They're not even being used. And so those could be retrofitted and they could produce probably twice as much power as we're producing now. So and I know for sure that the OPG has several dams that are out of, out of commission, they're not being used, they're out of repair because the money uh, funding is going to the green energy projects to the new dam and they're not fixing the old dams we need to ship them. So instead of putting new dams in, let's fix the ones we already have. The new turbines that they have are much more efficient, they can produce um, you know, a lot more power, they have low head turbines, but these little rivers, the reason they didn't have dams on them before is because they don't have enough flow. The only way that they can make these dams work is by using peaking dams. Um, they're not run of river, these dams, that they're, this new generation of dams. They're called peaking dams, and they're very harmful to the environment. They degrade water quality, Water quantity is reduced, it lowers oxygen levels, the big head ponds will cause warming, there's uh, mercury, methyl mercury is produced in these head ponds, it doubles the amount of mercury in many instances, doubles the amount of mercury in fish tissue, and that lasts for years, you know, up to, to 10, 30, and some studies say 100 years. So let's not sacrifice our water to save the air, because that's what the Green Energy Act is focusing on, is our air. But we need water too. So let's look after our fresh water. Let's not let them put dams on these little rivers. Let's fix the dams that we already have and make efficiencies. And let's get rid of the FIT program, because it's a, an expensive experiment that isn't working. Now the dam is located just below Wabagizik Lake on the river that heads out towards Espanola, meets with the Spanish River. The idea of all these dams, I don't know what there's 2,000 sites located through Northern Ontario that are targeted uh, possible dam sites. There's four along this river system. My interest here is that it's a, it's a honey hole. It's a place to come to bring family. But, you know, Ontario, we have a surplus of power. It's out there, we uh, sell it at a very cheap price to uh, the Quebec and states. But the impact of something like this, um, it, it's not something that makes sense. And uh, there's a lot of people that agree. The government did jump at this green energy. They thought it was green energy. Um, but there is a lot of negative impacts on these type of dams. It's a, an unorganized township. So it's one of these ones that they feel they can jump on and have no, no rebuttal from communities and such, so 
when companies come in, it seems they don't have that gut feeling to what we do and what the way we live in the north. You know, I'm really hoping that people out there, anybody that sees this video, I just, I hope you really understand that, you know, when you do go north, when you do leave the city, that these special spots, that's what you're coming here for. That's what you want to see. And if it doesn't make sense, you've got to support us. You've got to help, help the people of the north to stop unnecessary development like this. They're going to cage off this site. They're going to be fences. The water's going to be held back. Cottage owners are going to be affected. Fishermen down on this end of the river are going to be affected. We've got pickerel spawning beds. We have uh, oh, the deer, the yard all over the place up here. There's oak in the hills. The, the bear love it here. It's just, you know, it's that type of spot that when my mom and dad came up, this would be the spot I would take them to. Right out here is, that's where I go fishing. I take my grandchildren and we sit on the shore here. We'll light a campfire. We'll have a shore lunch. We'll cook fish. And uh, that's what we do. My name's Roger. I'm from uh, One First Nation. When I come to this here land here, I see all of that beauty out there. And it, when we work, we work together as a people. We used to be able to provide for each other here on this land. We put dams on these here places. We're gonna run out of that there. We're gonna run out of clean meat. We're gonna run out of clean fish. We're gonna run out of a clean way to live. And we're not gonna be able to support ourselves. We won't be able to live. We can't rely on what comes across the border in the transport trucks. We have to start relying on each other and start taking care of each other. We're not doing what we're supposed to do in taking care of Mother Earth. We are her keepers. We are her guardians. And we are broken. And until we start to work again as a people and as a community, she's going to suffer. You feel like you're on your own yeah. against yeah. a big, big clout. And there's a lot of clout because money is clout in this yeah. country. Power is country. Power is money. And sometimes when you're against money, it's, it's a really it's tough, a battle. tough battle. It is. You can't fish no. in a pool of money. No. You have to, yeah. you have to take care of what we have. Yeah. Apparently OPG have dams that uh, aren't even in operation right now because the mm -hmm. money's flowing to the green energy projects. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's not flowing to the OPG. And we get cheaper power through OPG than we do from these green energy projects. Right. We have lake sturgeon here now too, we know. Yes. You know, endangered species. Yeah. So what's that going to do to our endangered species? The zone of influence from the base of that dam goes all the way out to the Spanish River. And those uh, lake sturgeon were found uh, at Graveyard Rapids. Right. So, you know, that will be affected too. And it's Crown land. This is Crown land uh, that's been entrusted to the MNR to look after for us. Yeah. And they're going to give it away to developers. Billions of dollars worth of, of land that they're giving away for this. Our people, we'd come down here and we'd uh, harvest our fish. Um, in this here area, there's a quartz on the other side of the river over there. These here would have been drawing places, sometimes ceremonial places. Um, we'd come here and we'd do our fasts. And that's one of the most important things, is what type of footprint are we leaving for our children and for our grandchildren to see? Because if we do not take care of this land, and we make huge craters in the earth, or we put dams on all the rivers, what are we leaving them? Because this here water, that's fresh water, all of us need that. We have to have that to live. We have to have that to survive. When we put up those dams just to reduce power to make it easy for us to go over and turn that light switch on so that we can see at night, when we, when we put those dams in place, it's affecting more than just the so many houses that it's providing. It's affecting this here land, and it's affecting our future with our fish. It's affecting our future with the, the deer and the moose. And it's affecting our future with each other, as the ones who are out on the land and enjoying this here wonderful beauty. When they find out that it doesn't work, and it's not producing enough power, and they leave, 
we get left with what's left. You're at the open house in Espanola, right? Yes. <laughs> so we're at the open house, and uh, you know the company's there, and they've got beautiful charts on the walls. So I, I started to look for people with badges, and oh, you work for the company, Zeneca? Yeah. I said, so what do you think of the site? I said, what do you think of it? And uh, they look at me and says, well, it's nice, it's good. I said, so you've seen it, you've been there? Oh no, I wasn't there, but I, I've seen pictures and that. Oh, okay, well, just wait a sec. I called another one over. Same question. I went through four people. Not one of them have seen the site. You know, they're there to stand behind a project and defend what they're doing. But personally, they have no relationship to what's going on and what impact the project's doing. And, you know, the water levels in this country of ours are going down every year with global warming and stuff like that. So, you know, those type of things. It'll be uh, up to the taxpayer to pay to take that dam out. Yeah. Because climate change is here. Water levels are going lower every year. And, yeah. you know, they're not basing mm. their, uh, their economic, um, you know, figures on whether this thing can work or not on the last five years even. They're, they're basing it on the last hundred years mm -hmm. of flows. Right. It's Very going evident. to become even a bigger problem in the, in the yeah. future. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we have all these dams and all of a sudden they're not working anymore, they're, we're stuck with them because they're not requiring the developers to put money up front for taking them out someday. They do that in mining, but they're not doing that no. uh, with these hydroelectric dams. No. They're and, rushing. And how do we call that green? How can that be green for our environment when we leave that footprint behind? But there's no, no green. There's nothing yeah. green about it. We have to hold on to that. We're the ones that have to protect it. Right. But we need the help from the ones that are in those cities, from in those places. There may never be an opportunity for them to come and see this, but there may be an opportunity for their grandchildren to come and see it, or their great grandchildren. And if it's not here, then somebody hasn't done their job. We have to do the job. We've got to take care of our water. And, and that's why we're here today. Is so we can show those people in the city, we can show those people that can't walk along these shores what is going to be lost if the developers are allowed to come in. Mm -hmm. So as long as the rivers flow. Yes, let the rivers run free. <laughs>